Good evening. Welcome to New Horizons. If you have a mobile phone, if you'd like to put it on silent, please. Thank you. Hi tonight, massive welcome back to Kathy Rowan with Astro Angels Amongst Us. Tonight, Kathy, a lecturer, professional astrologer, and organizer and performer in burlesque shows and more, describes the link between astrology and angelic forces and how ultimately they may link with us. Kathy runs various courses locally, details available from her website, which is all the W's, rowanwicker.moonfruit.com. She has appeared on Radio Lancashire and Sky TV. Please welcome Kathy Rowan. Well, thank you all very much for coming out tonight. Who saw the moon on the way here? There's no magnificent. I want to talk to you a little bit about that moon, first of all because it's particularly important, this uh, full moon. It will be exactly full on Wednesday, and this full moon is in fact an eclipse, and it's a total eclipse, so that makes it rather special. The sun will be at 15 degrees of Aries, and the moon will be at 15 degrees of Libra, and the moon will be in front of the sun. So can you see this? This is the moon, this is the sun, and this is what's going on. Now every month, this kind of happens, and we call it a full moon. But when it's exact, and you can't see anything, then it is an eclipse. So things are perfectly aligned, and it's that alignment that is special. This eclipse that's happening won't have happened for 19 years. So if you cast your mind back 19 years and think about what was going on at that time in your life, that will have a resonance with the energy of this full moon and this eclipse in your life. If you're an Aries or a Libran, it will be particularly important. And even if you're not an Aries or a Libran, it is still very important because it's exactly aligned. So this is what in astrology we would call an important alignment. In the heavens, the sun represents the sun god and the moon represents the moon goddess. And when they come together like this, it's the celestial marriage. But the energy of an eclipse says that one is overpowering the other in this relationship. And it's the moon that is hiding away the sun at this time. So this is about feminine energies coming to the fore. And by feminine energies, I mean our intuition and our instincts. So it's a very psychic and special time, this full moon, for all of us. And we can work with this energy and take advantage of this energy if we are aware of it. And what this eclipse is all about is letting go of the past. And so for each of us, in some area of our life, there will be um, something that we need to let go of, something that we need to identify and let go of willingly. So it's quite... Um, a dramatic time and for some even a traumatic time it's a major time of change and this is a time where doors close and things come to a close and sometimes we find that difficult especially the fixed signs amongst us and by that I mean Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. The uh, cardinal signs Aries, Libra, Cancer and Capricorn are always keen to be moving on, getting on with the next thing. And so they will be keen to um, start up new projects at this time, tending to think more about the future than the past. And the signs that I haven't mentioned, they are the mutable signs and they are the people that can go with the flow and adapt quite well, whatever life throws at them. So wherever you find yourself amongst that circle of life, this um, important time will have an impact on you. Now, I scribbled out, but this eclipse uh, will affect us all, as I've said, 
And there's a particular energy to each eclipse. And um, this eclipse falls exactly on the place where the sun was when I was born. So it kind of makes sense to me that I'm here talking to you all about it because it resonates with me personally, um, as well as other people and uh, clients that I have and all of you. So th thanks to you, I got to find out exactly what this eclipse is all about, more than I normally would do because it's a case of the cobbler's children not having any shoes. The last thing that I would do is look at this properly for myself because I'm busy looking for everybody else. Every degree of the zodiac has its own special energy. And there are symbols associated with each of the degrees. And so by looking to see what degree this eclipse was falling at in the sky, what degree it will occur, I'm able to look and see about the symbol that goes with it and what it means. And it will have meaning to all of us in some area of our life. This is how the symbol goes. So this is the picture to paint in your mind. After the storms of winter, a boat, sorry, a boat landing stands in need of reconstruction. So this is describing the scene where there have been storms and there has been chaos and destruction and the boat in which people have been traveling is now shored and it needs fixing up, it needs repairing so that it can brave the seas again. And this is the energy of this eclipse, the eclipse that's happening on Wednesday. There will be areas in all of our lives where we feel that we've taken a bit of a battering. The storms often represent, because water's involved, the emotions. So whatever areas in your life that you feel you've taken a battering and things could do with healing and restoring and recovering, now is the time to embrace the energy of this eclipse and welcome in that healing energy that it will bring. So it's a very healing time and transformative time. We wouldn't expect the healing to happen overnight. We would expect it to take the course of the year because the energy of this eclipse will be with us for at least a year. So some time and some dedication to getting yourself all better and to getting whatever area of your life fully recovered that you feel is necessary is a good idea. We're thinking about reconstruction and rebuilding. And at the moment, Mercury is retrograde in the sky. And that means that the planet Mercury appears to be going backwards in the sky. It does this three times a year. And when that's happening, it's a time for communication being confused and <laughs> phone calls going astray and cars and technology and computers and people all being bewildered and confused and it's a right old mess really. So what we normally try to do in our solar society is push ahead all of the time, be productive all of the time. But when Mercury is retrograde, it's a time for us to reflect and to reconsider and to go back over things, to revise and relearn. So it fits in very nicely with the energy of this eclipse that we should do these things, that we should rebuild, reconstruct and rethink. So I hope that that is a little bit helpful to you, both in terms of this tremendous time of change that we've got going on this week and also this period of Mercury being retrograde. My advice to you is not to buy any major things, um, which is funny because I'm moving house and I've got loads of major things to buy, but I hope to be recycling and um, buying a lot of things like that to fit in with this uh, energy and also because I like so old things. This week is a week when we have to have faith and a good time to talk to you about angels and astrology uh, is this week because it's a time in which people may be feeling a little worn out and a little battered and bruised like I was saying with this energy knocking about 
And it's good to remind ourselves that we're not alone and that there is a bigger picture. So this rather there. fetching picture up here, Astro Angels. We'll see how I get on on working this technology. Having told you that it's not a good time for technology, I'm completely off the hook if it doesn't go very well, aren't I? Astrologers are renowned for this kind of thing, blaming Mercury retrograde. In actual fact, I'll tell you a secret. I used to work for this telephone company, um, you know, where you ring up and uh, you talk to a psychic. And uh, I was working for them as an astrologer and tarot reader. And we were told that when the computer played up and when the technology played up, to say that Mercury was retrograde, whether it was or it wasn't. Not very good that, is it? <laughs> good. So I haven't really got a proper plan of what to do. I've got a kind of a vague plan of what to do. So we'll see how this goes. And uh, later on I'll ask for questions and then you can ask about whatever it is, the real reason that you came tonight. This starts off with this lovely picture of the Tree of Life, a lovely Celtic picture. And it says, as above, so below, which is kind of how I believe the universe works, that all of the planets in the heavens are telling a story as they move around in their orbit, and they affect us. Science has proven now that we are all affected by the moon's energy, and as science and um, so on, these people uh, investigate more, they come up with more and more stuff that proves all the stuff that you already know, don't they? Ooh. So here we have a picture of the Jewish tree of life known as the Kabbalah. So previously, see if I can do this, I can. We had the Celtic one and here's the Jewish one and basically all cultures have their own idea of a tree of life, a tree that connects the heavens to the earth. And within it, um, the circles symbolize fruit on the tree, all the different areas of life. This method um, of looking at the universe is a spiritual system used by the Jewish people in history, but also used by all manner of spiritual people. Um, it isn't a religion, it's a system that we can all use. And through learning about the Tree of Life, I learned more about the angels. Now, we've all heard of angels from being children, whatever your um, background, you know, nobody escapes, do they? But when I was a little girl, I was brought up as a Catholic, and so angels had their place in that religious system. And I was brought up to believe in the idea of a guardian angel. And in fact, I still do believe in the idea of a guardian angel. But nothing much was made of the other angels in the um, Bible or the religious system that I was brought up in. Uh, a, little, a little bit of mention was made of Michael, who is the most famous, I think, of the angels, and Gabriel. I think these are the two that um, crop up the most in the Bible. So I had a bit of an awareness of them too, Gabriel as a messenger and um, Michael with his big sword and that was about it really. And because I associated angels and angelic experience with Catholicism and a religion that didn't suit me, I um, didn't want to know anything about angels when later they cropped up in paganism. So um, much later I was at pagan conferences and gatherings, witchy gatherings. People would talk about using the Kabbalah in magic and um, angels and crosses and all this kind of kit and caboodle and I thought, mm, this is not for me, I don't like the sound of that. And generally in life, whenever I've thought to myself, I don't like the sound of that, that's usually the thing that I end up doing unintentionally, find myself back there. And I think that this is kind of a way of uh, the universe having a bit of a laugh. You might have experienced this. 
There's nothing like the utter conviction that this is not going to work for you to find yourself doing it again somehow. So there I was as a grown-up and uh, having chosen my own path, blah de blah and um, one of my teachers that I respected a lot said, I'm going to teach people about the tree of life, why don't you come along? And I thought, well, I'll see if I like it. And this started a love-hate relationship with the Kabbalah that's lasted many years. In fact, maybe 25 years or something like that, a long time. And uh, sometimes I'm in love with it and sometimes I'm not in love with it. These days I'm more in love with it for longer periods and then occasionally I fall out with it, but I'm like that. It's not particularly an Aries thing, I'm not taking you all down with me, I'm just like that. So this picture that you're looking at, I can see it here. It's a very good system, I'm not used to this. Uh, and I think there's a pointy thing on here, let me have a go. Oh, this is good. So let me point to something, a reason to use it. There we are, that's my kid down the bottom. Ah, oh, I can't look at you and look at that and stay still, that's what I've just learned. I'm kind of anywhere. <laughs> so the different spheres are associated with different uh, qualities within our personality. For example, the bit of you that is ambitious, the bit of you that is confident, the bit of you that is romantic or businesslike or dreamy or whatever. They're all different aspects that make up your personality. And these different spheres represent all the different aspects of all of our personalities. And some of us will have more of one area, and some of us will have more of another area. For example, some of you will be more sporty, other people will be more couchy. <laughs> um, here we have... Ooh. That's Hod, and that's the bookie place. So some of you will like reading and doing bookie stuff. The hot area, especially associated with Gemini and Virgo. That area, Netzark, the green area, that is about nature and being out in nature and doing those things like camping and loving animals and all those kind of things. And in some people, they have an equal balance of these two qualities. But in most people, one will be stronger than the other. One side of their personality will be stronger than the other. That little dark red area, Gabora, that is about energy and aggression and assertion, and it's like a warrior area. That area, as she said, that is about confidence and teaching and generosity, like the benefactors that we had in the Victorian times that would start up libraries and stuff like that for the good of the people. And again, different qualities, different types of people. And amongst us all, there will be a little bit from every area, and some areas will be very well developed. So I started learning about all this stuff. And I was particularly interested in how it related to astrology and the different signs of the zodiac. As I've said to you, this area is associated with Gemini and Virgo because they're booky people. So I wanted to make a study of the different areas in the tree and how they affect different people. And I was coming at it very much from an intellectual point of view and thought, if I study this and go to the right people, the experts in the field, then I will be able to learn all about the mystical side of astrology, which is what I wanted to do. However,